So consider the process for extracting iron metal from hematite ore, where hematite is reacted with carbon and gets reduced by the carbon to produce iron metal. You've got 23 grams of hematite reacting with 7 grams of carbon, and we want to know how much iron metal is produced. This reaction's got two reactants, and you've got different amounts of each reactant. So what we have to do is we have to decide which one of these is going, is going to get used up first, which one's going to run out first, because that's going to limit how much product we can make. If you run out of a reactant, the reaction stops and you can't make any more product. So we have to find what's called the limiting reactant, and then kind of by comparison we'll see which one is the excess reactant, the one that's in present in amounts that will mean it will be left over after the reaction. So remember also that stoichiometry has to be done with moles, so that'll almost always be the first step in any calculation like this. So we have 23 grams, 23.0 grams of Fe2O3, and that has a weight of one mole for every 159.70 grams, which means that 23 grams of that contains 0.144 moles of Fe2O3. And our 7 grams of carbon, uh, we can find the moles of that the same way. One mole of carbon has 12.01 grams, which means our 7 grams of carbon contains 0.583 moles of carbon. And this is a good starting point. Now we need to find out which of these reactants is limiting, which one runs out first, before we can even bother to decide how much product gets made. And there are two ways to do this. And they are compare reactants, where you compare the amount of one reactant to the other. And the second way is predictions, where you use the amounts of each reaction um, to predict how much metal gets made. And whichever number is smaller, that's the amount that actually gets made. So now we're going to look at method number one, which compares the two reactants and decides which one runs out first and therefore controls how much product gets made. So for every one Fe2O3, you need three carbons. Since we actually have 0.144 moles of Fe2O3, we have to set up a ratio where we have three carbons for every one Fe2O3, and we can decide how much carbon actually needs to be present in order to use up all of our hematite. And that amount turns out to be 0.432 moles of carbon. Now, we have 0.583 moles of carbon, but we only need 0.432. That means carbon is our excess reagent, and it means the iron oxide, the iron 3 oxide, the hematite, is our limiting reagent. So now we know which one's limiting, we can work out what our theoretical yield is. We can work out how much iron actually gets produced. The iron 3 oxide, the hematite, is going to be our limiting reagent, so we start with it, and we say that you can make two irons for every one Fe2O3, and we set up our ratio, and it means we can cancel our iron 3 oxides, and we can work out that you can make a maximum of 0.288 moles of iron. And this 0.288 moles of iron, this numeric value is our theoretical yield. The second method for working out limiting and excess reagents is to do predictions based on the number of reactants that you have. If you have two reactants, you do two predictions. And the predictions you do is where you assume each reactant individually is limiting, and you say, if this reactant is limiting, we want to predict how much product we can make. So here we'll assume the hematite is limiting and do a prediction for how much iron can be made, and we'll do a prediction where we say carbon is limiting, how much iron can we make. So it's always two predictions. So we start with 0.144 moles of hematite, Fe2O3, and we say we can make two irons for every one Fe2O3, which means we can make 0.288 moles of iron. So this is prediction number one. Our second prediction is using carbon. We have 0.583 moles of carbon, and if carbon is limiting and it all gets used up, we can make two irons for every three carbons, 
which means we can make a total of 0 0.389 moles of Fe. So we've done our two predictions, and whichever prediction is smaller is the theoretical yield. So again, we decide we can make 0 0.288 moles of iron. That's the theoretical yield. And we know it's the theoretical yield because it's the smaller amount. Whichever one's limiting, whichever one runs out first, is going to determine how much product you can make. And whichever one is present in excess is going to predict a larger amount of product that could be made. So this value is actually meaningless. We can't ever make it because we run out of hematite first. And if we run out of hematite first, that means it's our limiting reagent. And if it runs out first, that means that the carbon must be our excess reagent.